Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, as promised, we are here with another video. But before we do that, I wanted to show you this. And in this bright light, it's showing up more damage than it really is. Good grief. Uh, but this is my one and only Pathé record. So this is going to be a vertical cut as well, similar to an Edison disc. Absolutely beautiful label. And like I said, some of the giant Pathé records, you, could, you played those at 120 RPM. So, really interesting stuff. But what I wanted to show you today was a different record. Let me set this down gently. Um, we want to check out and listen to a recording. Hopefully I don't get a copyright hit. Now you may be laughing and saying, copyright hit, come on. Hold on, I gotta sneeze. No, I don't, okay. Um, it's happened before. I get copyright hits on stuff, you know, in the 19 teens. So, and those are content ID matches, not, you know, copyright strikes. So, you know, no harm, no foul. It's just I want any video ads that you watch to support the channel, not somebody else. So um, I try to, you know, keep that in mind. But anyhow, uh, we will see what we get with this. Uh, this is a Columbia exclusive artist. And that was an interesting thing is a lot of, of these records will talk about, you know, them being at the time of pressing, a, you know, an exclusive, exclusive artist. And this label is just beautiful. Check out the gramophone, grand, granifo, graphinola, there we go. Columbia logo. I just love this. Highest awards. Price in the USA, $1. Isn't it bizarre to think if you go on iTunes today and buy a song, it's a dollar. And this record, a dollar. So, you know, judging and, you know, accounting for inflation, Music costs a lot more back then than it does now. Uh, but super interesting. Also, ironically, you know, a record like this is probably worth about a dollar still. So in that regard, it holds its value. Um, this is not the original label. Um, but it's a cool label, and I want to show some of my labels. Look at that. What the heck is going on? Why does that look so small on the back? Well, let's take a look at this record. This is a super, super neat one. I don't think we've ever featured this on the channel before. Gosh, these are dust. I need to clean these. You know, when you don't have this super bright video light, you don't see, you know, that these things need dusting. But anyway, there it is. It's actually in pretty dang good condition. This is an acoustically recorded record, so no electric recording techniques, no microphones, no amplification, no, you know, electric mixing. So unlike our last, you know, video, which played an orthophonic or electrically recorded song, this one is going to be acoustic where all the people in the studio just gathered around the horn that was connected to the diaphragm that was connected to the cutting lathe, yada, yada, yada. This is a unique record because it's one-sided. So this is the reverse side, completely smooth. I love one-sided records. I have a few of them, a couple of them. And some of them don't have anything on the back. I like this one because it has the Graffinola logo on the back of it as well. Super, super neat. This is a 10-inch... 10 inch shellac record and we're going to listen to it Put my phonograph here now you do have to keep your needles replaced when you're listening to these records you don't want to you know rip through a record with a dull stylus so i happen to have a supply of new old stock and some of these um, are really cool to look at just the advertising in the Art on some of these packages. It's really cool. Super, super neat. Very unique. I love, you know, vintage branding and things. I have a whole bunch. I won't go through all of them. But anyhow, uh, let's go ahead and take out. I've also got a bunch of uh, kind of just loose ones in there as well. The way I test that these are good or not is I, I touch the bottom of them. <laughs> if they feel sharp, you know, sharper than what I'm putting on it, I, I know it's a good one. So this one is actually not too bad and I'd probably use it more if it was, you know, not for the sake of this video, but the little uh, tray back there to put the old one in and then we just insert the new one, screw it in and we're ready to go. So let me go ahead and crank her up. As I mentioned in my last video, my brake leather needs to be replaced instead of a rubber thing to break the platter from spinning when you don't want it to use a little piece of leather mine's worn out so 
kind of freaky when it goes off in the middle of the night, but there you go. Okay, so let's spin up to speed. It does have a speed adjustment over here, I think you can see. We're gonna start right in the middle point and see if that's good. And here we go. Completely acoustic music. Speed it up just a little bit. If anybody's still there, thank you for enduring that. From a musical standpoint, <laughs> I listen to operatic music, I listen to classical, but a lot of these old 78s I don't enjoy for the musical side of it necessarily, much more the historical side of it. So that being said, fascinating record, really interesting. I think I have played this at some point in the channel, on the channel before, but I wanted to demonstrate an acoustic recording. Um, also, talking again about playing the uh, vertically cut records, this particular one has a hybrid um, reproducer, so I can rotate it like that to play Edison discs and whatnot. The downside is, or not downside, but the other thing is I have to get a sapphire ball stylus or a diamond one. A few of you mentioned that as well. I can't use steel because it'll rip up those Edison diamond discs, but it can be done on this hybrid phonograph but all right guys that's gonna do it for today thank you so much for watching i super uh i'm super thankful and very much appreciate you being out there and i need to give this phonograph a, it's yearly oiling <laughs> not the mechanism but actually oil the wood to keep it shiny and clean and with this bright light on it, i can see like the dusty corners and whatnot so i want to keep it in pristine physical condition inside and out so if you want to see more on this machine just search vita nola v-i-t-a dash nola uh in the search field and you will find uh, a lot more that we've done on this i want to show you this label real quick just super super cool made in chicago 1917 i think it was one of those companies where they sold that you know they really made the furniture part of it they made the cabinet and then they used common stock components that were sort of off the shelf built unlike you know another one there were like two thousand companies making i don't want to say knockoff 
phonographs uh, to compete with like Victrola, but they were making, there was a lot of competition in that space. Let's just say that. And you can find these for, you know, anywhere from 200 to, I wouldn't pay more than three, $400 for one, even if it's in really good condition. A lot of people sell these and they think they're worth thousands and they're just not. But anyway, there you go, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Happy record hunting. We will see you tomorrow.